Welcome back to Micro Soldering Wednesdays. My name is Derek, and today we're going to be going over an iPad Pro 3rd Gen that has had a previous repair attempt and no touch. And hopefully this video gives you an idea of how to diagnose an issue and resolve an issue. We'll be going over testing voltage for the touch lines, making sure we have the proper diode or ohms readings, and going over some helpful things to see if we can get a successful repair. Let's get into the video. Today we will repair iPad Pro 3 with non-responsive touch. The customer described that the screen has been replaced before, but it was unsuccessful. When we take it apart, we can tell that there has been a previous work attempted at fixing this issue. Connecting the screen, we can test the power consumption of the touch as the only way to test this is with the screen connected. While powered on, we can measure on this section 16.2 volts of power consumption. When we look over on this side, we've got 0.64-ish power consumption. Looking at a schematic, let's try to understand this touch line. This coil comes from VDD main and pulls power in through this boost IC, and the output goes through these capacitors. Now, given that we have a component here that kind of acts as a a bridge between the two lines. On A2 is where we have 16 volts. We can bridge A2 and A1 to get that 16 volts on the other line. The thing we need to make note of is their specifications. This 16 volts ends up going through this resistor R2222 which supplies power to the main touch ICs. This is the touch power supply line for most iPads. Now getting back at the issue, because we didn't measure 16 volts, it being 0.64 volts, we're going to bypass this IC by connecting pins A1 and A2. We just need to add a little bit of solder bridging the two. Just like that. Now you can see when we test the line that had 16 volts across, we get 0 ohms, which indicates that the circuit is definitely connected across that. And at the same time, testing diode resistance reveals a 0.19 on both sides. Something else that I noticed is that this capacitor has been replaced with a different capacitor that should be there. Let's test again and see if we have the touch. And we have no response to touch us still, so we need to inject voltage. So we're going to use this power supply. It is the TS20A. We'll be able to inject a high voltage to see which component is causing the loss of 16 volts and, uh, and therefore no touch. So we'll turn this up to 5 volts, very high current shock. You can see that when we touch it, we get a shock and we can tell which component is bad because it oxidizes immediately. And when we measure a diode resistance to ground, can see that we've got straight short to ground now. The problem lies in this capacitor leaking straight to ground so we're going to remove it along with the one that oxidized and the one that we tested. But as you can see when we test it we get a normal resistance. So we're going to find the correct values using schematics, pulling from another logic board, finding the exact values so we can replace all of those components. The 4.7 microfarad, 25 volt ceramic capacitor at 402 at one millimeter. We'll install those high capacity capacitors and we'll measure and we get 0.23, which is around where we need it to be for a touch. So we'll reconnect the screen and test. And as you can see, we have confirmed touch functionality everywhere on the screen. And there we go. The touch has been restored. Now something like this could have been caused from something as simple as an ESD shock or somebody not disconnecting the battery when reconnecting the screen, creating a short on the touch line. Very common issue in amongst iPads because of how annoying they are to disconnect the battery. And even when the battery is disconnected, sometimes people for forget to properly drain the board of power. The capacitors act like mini batteries and they do store energy, so even if the power source is disconnected like the battery, you still need to drain the board. 
A simple way to do that is to hold down the power button for at least 10 seconds, giving the power that's reserved in the logic board a chance to find its way to ground, completely leaving you with a dead board that won't have the ability to basically get damaged from an ESD shock. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you tomorrow for Tips and Tricks Thursdays. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.